Good morning, everybody. So today, what we want to talk about is iron deficiency anemia, or other things that can commonly be mistaken for anemia. Anemia, which is low blood count, low red blood cell count in your blood, often with, combined with hematocrit and hemoglobin. If all three are low, you're technically considered anemic or having low amounts of red blood cells that cannot carry enough oxygen to your cells. Now, one possible reason why that could be happening is a lack of iron. It could be a lack of different B vitamins, especially B12, sometimes folate, B6, I think B5 even, could be a copper issue. There are a lot of reasons why you might have not enough blood. You could be having too heavy of blood loss, periods, hemorrhoids, ulcers that are bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, other bleeds inside of your body. There could be many, many reasons why you might be bleeding and losing blood. So just to say like you have a little bit low red blood cell count and just automatically slap the label of IDA, iron deficiency anemia on it, doesn't really make sense. If you're not testing, you're guessing, right? It's one of the most important concepts in functional medicine and medicine in general. If you're not testing, you're guessing. However, sometimes guessing is okay, making a medical estimate or hypothesis. Sometimes it's not okay. Also, say hi to these doggies. We got Ziggy back there, who's strapped in, Albus is strapped in, and Ace is sitting in the front seat with me old man that never goes anywhere and I don't have enough seat belts for him but he's doing okay so anyways um you got three dogs this week which is great but also a lot to <laughs> walk by yourself but all those things could also cause anemia chronic inflammation can cause anemia some autoimmune conditions will cause anemia lack of absorption in your gut will cause anemia so there are a lot of reasons why you might be anemic that people aren't really talking about um, even like birth control pills can, or antibiotic use or protein pump inhibitors acid blockers histamine receptors can affect your gut flora which can cause a bacterial or yeast fungal overgrowth which can block the absorption of b vitamins which can block the absorption of protein and that can cause anemia lack of b vitamins from that can cause anemia um, a lot of people don't realize that you know, antibiotics can cause fungal overgrowth or yeast infections either vaginally or in your gut. And just because you're not aware you have it doesn't mean you don't have it. Um, so those things can all cause it. Well, just lack of protein in general, the aging process can cause anemia because you don't make enough stomach acid or pancreatic enzymes to tell. And if you don't have a Heidelberg machine, you really don't know what the pH of your stomach truly is because all of the other methods are not as accurate in determining. So there are ways to know for sure gold standard tests and there are pseudoscience tests and there are some tests that are useful but not 100% accurate. So no test is 100% accurate but there are some tests that are fairly accurate. So it helps just to see like which to know what the best possible test is. And the only way you really know if you have iron deficiency anemia is if you take a iron and ferritin test and you might even have like low iron saturation or a higher binding capacity of iron as well so you have to be careful of that so it's a little bit tricky um, and sometimes like you're right on the cusp so your doctor won't tell you like, you're you're super low because you're not super low but everything is right on the cusp of being low so actually increasing your iron containing foods increasing you know red meat or spinach or I think tofu has iron in it um, Increasing leafy greens, increasing all the spinach containing iron containing foods can actually help quite a bit. So you can also overdo it. There's a lot of men, especially in their like from like 25 to 50 years old, who have really high iron. Part of that's because their liver is really bothered. So their ferritin actually goes really high. They might even have a genetic trait called hemochromatosis where you have way too much iron. But too much iron is often more damaging to your body than not enough iron. So Low iron can cause you to feel cold. It can cause you to have poor um, cold hands and feet, poor circulation, not enough oxygen to your tissues, tiredness, fatigue, lethargy, a lot of hypothyroid type symptoms, brain fog, um, trouble sleeping is a big one. And just because you don't have anemia on a blood test doesn't mean you don't have low blood volume in general, which a TCM, traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, can tell you. So there's a lot there. I know there's so there's basically lots of different deficiencies or lack of absorption issues that'll cause it and the low protein is a big one if your total protein on your cmp complete metabolic panel is below seven or below 6.8 definitely at 6.6 .6 or lower you probably have functionally low protein definitely if you're like 
6.3, 6.2, 6.0 or lower, for sure have low protein. And that total protein in the blood goes to making white blood cells and red blood cells, basically albumin and globulin. So most people are going to get low, well, I shouldn't say that, but you'll either get low white blood cell count or low red blood cell count. So if you have that, it might not be that you're like truly immune deficient. It might just be you don't have the building blocks to make your albumin or globulin. So it's something to look at. But if you have low IgG, low IgM, low IgA, total antibody load in your blood test, then you might want to look at the total protein and see what's going on. Because it could affect your immune system or it could affect blood flow and circulation to your brain or other tissues in your body. Look again at these guys. A's. Ziggy being so cute. Hey, Ziggy. Nope, she's like way too intrigued by Northwestern's campus. So anyways, um, people be crossing the street when they're not supposed to but we avoid them. So, anemia, what else? Standing up quickly and like falling over is a classic sign of IDA, iron deficiency anemia, which is the reel that I'm gonna post today um, that I found that someone else made. But there are a lot of other reasons why you will stand up and get dizzy or black out or lightheaded. It can be an autonomic nervous system issue like POTS, which is often related to your adrenals. It can be your assault deficiency. It can be another electrolyte deficiency, um, like antidepressants will dep deplete you of sodium and sometimes cause headaches and things like that. Um, so be careful of that. But sodium deficiency, um, lack of hydration can do it in other minerals. Lack of like low blood sugar or even high blood sugar can cause that as well. Um, so you wanna be careful of those things causing that like standing up, getting dizzy or faint. Chronic pain can sometimes do that too. Um, can throw the nervous system out, but basically your kidney or adrenal system don't increase your blood pressure fast enough and that can cause issues. So it could be a kidney issue, it could be an adrenal issue. Most commonly I see are functional adrenal patterns or not enough sodium, not enough hydration. Um, sometimes the autonomic nervous system is off though. And in the adrenals, your autonomic nervous system is almost always off. So a lot of people, if you read my book, I explain the difference and how to know if you truly have an adrenal problem, but something to look out for. So. That's IDA, hope that helps y'all. Let me know what questions you have um, and what other future health videos you want me to make. I'm pretty sure I've always get asked a lot on POTS and I have one patient right now who's going through POTS and was doing a lot better but then went back to school and was struggling with stress and other stuff and managing like a full-time schedule and full-time training and like basically not able to sleep or rest enough which is one of the best ways to heal POTS. So I'll probably make a video on POTS next or quite soon. Anyways, hope you have a good day. Enjoy your loved ones. Um, know that just by being alive means you're loved. Enjoy your puppies and have a good one. Bye. Love y'all. Oh, I also want to mention um, my favorite supplement is Optiferin C. Some people really like Floridix for iron, which is a liquid herbal iron, but I think it tastes horrible. Some people don't mind it, but I think it just tastes disgusting. And that's coming from someone who um, doesn't mind almost any herbs now just because I've been desensitized to them all. So, Floridix can be helpful, non-constipating, but Optiferin-C by Pure Encapsulations, like one of those a day, two a day if you're really deficient, but one a day is helpful. But again, test to see what your levels are, to know how much and how long you take it. Usually it's taken for um, like a bottle or two, but it depends on why you're getting the iron loss in the first place if you do have low iron. Um, so you want to look at the root cause of why you're not absorbing, digesting, breaking down iron. It also can be a low adrenal, low thyroid cause because if you have low adrenal, low thyroid, you might not be making enough stomach acid to absorb it as well. So check into all those things. But Optiferin C is a good one. If you're also low in B vitamins or you're vegan or vegetarian, Hemplex FE by Numedica is a good one to take one a day as well. I think those supplements you can get. I don't know if you can get all of them, but some of them you might be able to get through our online store, which is linked on my website, um, our supplement store. But I'd prefer you go and support local docs and practitioners because they probably need the business right now and we don't need it so much. But anyways, if you want to support us, that's a good way to do it and hope that helps. Bye.